Welcome to emergency episode of the San Jose Hockey Now podcast. I'm Sheng Peng, Editor-in-Chief of San Jose Hockey Now. You can also find my work at MEC Sharks and on Twitter at Sheng underscore Peng. And I'm Keegan McNally. You can find me on Twitter at Halfwall underscore Hockey at my website half-wallhockey.com or at San Jose Hockey Now. It is an emergency episode of the San Jose Hockey Now podcast, like you mentioned. Um, the San Jose Sharks GM Mike Greer has fired David Quinn after two seasons as the head coach of the San Jose Sharks. Um, we're going to cover a lot today, um, including our first reactions. We're going to track a little bit about uh, Shang's knowledge of this story, some perceptions on David Quinn on the firing, all sorts of things. Um, and then little maybe, Will Smith stuff too at the end too. So. Yeah, maybe a little bit of an update on Will Smith and we'll talk about some next head coach discussion although we're very 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 early in that process so it's gonna be exciting <laughs> shang what was your actually why don't we go back to the beginning okay shang talk about your your um experience or knowledge on on this and, and were you surprised at all is a good question i was not surprised hmm. On Saturday during the exit interview, I was a little surprised that uh, Mike did not give David a vote of confidence that day. Mm -hmm. Mike was asked directly if David Quinn was coming back. At that point, when I heard it, I was surprised, but I still thought eh, maybe it's just one of those kind of cliche due diligence things. I'm mm -hmm. just doing my due, due, due diligence and, and then we'll figure out that it's fine. But on uh, Monday, uh, that's two days ago, and you can confirm some of this too. I know it's going to be uh, easy for me to say I, I knew about this, but Keegan, uh, you can confirm uh, some of this. On uh, Monday, and I... like a good secret keeper, you know, lip seal. Yes, uh. yes, <laughs> Keegan did a great job of that. Uh, on Monday, I got a phone call from somebody saying that he was hearing that something was getting set in motion there with. Uh, mm -hmm firing David Quinn. And I checked around uh, a bit on it. And uh, what my initial source told me, uh, uh, other sources agreed on. But I was told, though, at the time that it was a 80% chance. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting on the confirmation to come out with a story because this is one of those stories where 80% is likely, but there's 20% chance that it's not going to happen. Sure. And I don't, I don't want to be wrong. It's one of these cases where you can argue and now I'm kicking myself over it, but you can argue that it's better to be right than first, especially when you're talking about somebody's job and and that sort of thing right not something sure. to to be bandied about lightly mm -hmm. and so that's kind of where i i was with it and so that's why i wasn't surprised because i had a sense of it for a, a couple of days i just was waiting for a confirmation which the sharks provided at at uh, about 11 30 in, in in the morning here and So yeah, not 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 surprised. <laughs> yes, is the point. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and with you, Keegan, I told you uh, uh, because on actually on Monday we were supposed to record a podcast talking about should the Sharks keep or let Quinn go, yep. and I told Keegan on Monday uh, that yeah maybe we uh, we shouldn't bother with recording that because that may not be relevant soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so but we're a little delayed this week folks yeah well so yeah so uh but but yeah like i said so i i had a sense of it but i i yeah i i again i i didn't want to jump the jump the gun on it for sure and um and so that's yeah uh in terms of just the first uh just reaction to it um if you get past the whether i was surprised or not I would, I think right now, because Mike, Mike, uh, Mike had a press, Mike had a press conference today trying, uh, talking about letting uh, David Quinn go and mm -hmm. the next coach of the Sharks. Except he didn't say a lot. He said uh, very little in about 10 minutes uh, there. And I think we asked most of the right questions. We asked multiples of the same question. That's one of the things you learn as a reporter. 
if the first time you ask a question doesn't get the answer you want, then you ask the same question, but like in a different way, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> which, which I think between uh, Curtis and Max and myself, I think we did okay job with that. I mean, you guys but, were bouncing off of each other, like trying to f- get like a little bit of an addendum. Get on a little question. bit more each each yeah. time with asking mm-hmm. basically the same question. Mm-hmm. And Mike wasn't giving today. And Mike does often give a lot with his press conferences, as you could see on Saturday in his exit interview, which he talked at length and at detail with things that were very specific. Mm-hmm. But today he was not. And understandably so. Mike said that he reached a decision to fire David last night. Mm -hmm. it seems like there's no successor immediately in mind which is what i thought uh, for a couple days or maybe they had someone in mind already but i I guess they don't not immediately at least um so so absent some information I think that this is pretty unfair, actually. And granted, this coaching is is a super unfair business. I thought the same thing when they hired Bob Bugner. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was very unfair. But Mike Greer was coming in, and usually a new GM wants to bring in his guy. And Greer's new guy was David Quinn. And in this case, with David, I think it's uh, unfair because Quinn was given an awful, awful team. I, I, I don't, I don't know how to express just it was a very poorly constructed roster. And I think sure. that is more on, on Mike Greer than anybody to, to be honest. And I didn't kill Quinn that much this year, despite it was a 19 win season, 47 point season, because over the course of the season, I saw how just misshapen her roster he was given. And mm-hmm. I didn't even kill Mike that much about it because I looked at it as, well, he was handed an awful situation by Doug Wilson and and Joe Will, and he had to get his way out of it and make some sacrifices, haircut some players that you don't want to trade, like Hurdle, Carlson, and Meyer. But Mm -hmm. in two of those cases, Hurdle and Carlson, they both really wanted out, and Burns, so we can include him in there. And in Meyer's case, maybe Meyer would have stayed, but what's the point of keeping a guy like this when your team is... Let's say your team is good in three, four years. Meyer's going to be 30. Is he still going to be the same player? Maybe, maybe not. It's a big risk, right? And so I, I understood that that Mike had to trade some of his stars while they had still had some value. And mm-hmm. kudos to Mike, by the way, for getting value for most of them, except for Burns, I guess. But all the other guys, I think he overall... Uh, everything in balance, if you consider everything, made pretty good trades for for all those uh, those other three guys that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. So big picture, and I've said this before on the podcast. Big picture, I, I like what Mike ha- has done in terms of what he's gotten back for some of these players. The emphasis on picks and prospects, um, giving giving contracts to younger players that are are, are very in between trying to stay in the NHL, trying to prove themselves, guys like Zadina, Stanika, Addis, taking chances on them, even if they don't work out. They're good guys to take a chance on. But in terms of roster construction, though, and I've talked about this, I talked about this about a month ago on a podcast that was being titled, Why Are the Sharks So Easy to Play Against? Oh, yeah, that was a good one. And a big part of it is, and I'm not putting the blame all on these all these players, but look, you start the season with five guys of a similar profile. Zadina, I mentioned, Kevin LeBanc, Alexander Barabanov, Mike Hoffman, Anthony Duclair. And mm. there's different reasons why all these guys are on your team, I understand. And Zadina, I thought, was a good gamble because of his pedigree, obviously. Um, at the time of the deals, we lauded the Anthony Duclair trade. Alex Barabanov had a really nice season last year. Even Kevin LeBanc had an okay season last year. So... Coming into the season, it like looked like yeah, maybe you can find you can you can get some drafting value at the deadline for one of these guys. Not Zadina, you know, Zadina is younger. You're looking maybe to keep him, but the other four guys you talk about, right? They're all they're all pending UFAs. But the thing though is okay, so you have these five guys, and again, I I mean this as a microcosm of everything that was wrong with the Sharks roster, not as the only reason why. I'm not putting it all on these specific players, but basically okay. though, you have five five wingers of the same profile. Basically the profile is if they're not scoring, they're not helping you. Hmm. Right. These guys are not guys with B games. They're not, they're not really going to be on your penalty kill. Uh, They're not going to be 
they're not going to be a great F ones on the four check mm-hmm. turning pucks over. They're not going to be great defensively. Um, and throw out the, 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 the garbage of, of, of the, the fancy stats with Kevin LeBanc. Like he's, he's not, he's, that's not his game that he's, he is good at shot share and that that's a skill. So I want to give Kevin uh, credit for that. Um, he's good. He, so there's, there's, there's value offensively, but he's not good defensively. So we can talk more about it some other time, but, uh, but anyway, I think, yeah, yeah. When Kevin, when Kevin play, had some bright spots, but yeah, most this season's Kevin LeBanc was, I don't, I don't care what fancy stats says. Kevin LeBanc was really bad. <laughs> was yeah. And I think the fancy stats say he was okay this year. Not as bad as the Sharks. Even they like say a... about Zadina too. Yeah. And the yeah, Le- bank historically uh, are, is, he's is like strong. a fancy stats. Yeah. Like a, a, a darling in some ways, even though sometimes he gets, you know, benched for whatever reason. And it's not and, for whatever uh, reason though. There are good reasons why. He's oh, yeah. Yeah. I meant, I meant for a multitude <laughs> of reasons. How's that? <laughs> um, and it, yeah, like you're saying those, those dudes Greer for whatever reason has them on the team. He's inherited some of them or took them as cap dumps or whatever. And it's very obvious that Quinn didn't really take to much of those players either. So it wasn't like Quinn was trying to reward bad behavior for those dudes anyway. So I think you expressed it well last week when we talked about Luke Cunning. So you said something to the effect of with Luke Cunning that the charts, the fancy stats, they're predisposed toward a certain type of player. Mm Mm-hmm. And Kevin LeBanc is a player that they're predisposed to. Nobody in the league thinks he's a good defensive player. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. True. He's good in certain areas. I don't want to take that away from Kevin, but I don't think anybody thinks that he is a good defensive player. So the part of the reason why I, I, I mentioned this, though, is to I want to emphasize the point again that so you have a, a profile of a lot of players here that are good at specific things. Mike Hoffman historically, obviously... 20 goal scorers six times, has touched 30 before. Anthony Duclair scored 31 a couple of years ago. Zadina has the pedigree of a score. Bear Bonif had a very good season last year and a couple seasons, a uh, very good couple of seasons uh, before the, this year. But they all profile as guys that if they're not scoring, they're not helping you, like I said. And mm-hmm. what happened this year, the Sharks are off 0, 10, and 1, and every one of those guys uh, wasn't scoring and they weren't helping. <laughs> and... One of the the things that they they these players don't have as their B game is that they're not hard to play against. They're not kind of players that when the going gets really tough, uh, like a Luke Cunning, that they that the fight is still there. That and again, mm-hmm. I'm not trying to put it all on these guys, but it's just, I'm just trying to tell you that this con- the team was constructed in not a very good way. You mm-hmm. can live with a couple of these guys on your team, but if you have five of them and none of them are scoring, then your results are going to be as follows as as what what happens. Other roster construction questions are obviously the lack of a PP1 quarterback. And I know that's a little hard to acquire, of course, but if you're in a place where it's Kyle Burrows as your PP1 quarterback, there is something off, no disrespect to Kyle, but there's something off with their roster construction, right? If he's your PP1 quarterback early in the season. Um, So I think there's, that's a big part of it. Obviously the injuries too, that can't be ignored. And that, that is a defense for both Mike and, and, and David in terms of just the, the centermen and um, the centermen make the wingers better too. And so maybe if you had all four centermen healthy, Couture, Hurdle, Granlin, and Sturm, they could have papered over some things with the Bear Bond. Maybe Bear Bonoff and Duclair most likely, because we saw Duclair did take off by uh, by midseason, and Bear Bonoff was very good over the last, uh, uh, pretty good at least. Mm-hmm. I don't want to over oversell it, but it was pretty good the last couple of years. And sure. so maybe if you have healthy centermen, then those guys, uh, those guys uh, look a little better. But in a group that, I mean, talk about the first 11 games of the season. You have Thomas Bartolo and Jacob Peterson in your top nine of centers. That's, that's, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to win that way. Sorry. And so basically the season starts off as it does and it snowballs. Yeah. Once, once guys are in a bad situation and it's not getting better and then they kind of know that they're leaving too. Um, speaking of those wingers. Are, are these the guys that are going to be blocking, going crazy blocking shots and all that kind of stuff? 
doing those little things to keep you in games and uh, maybe not. And I don't totally blame them. Uh, mm. it's, it's, there's a point where it just becomes about self self preservation. Preservation. Everybody goes into the season with the best of intentions. Where you start off zero, ten, and one, I think a lot of those best of intentions go out the window pretty, uh, pretty fast. Mm. So, anyway, uh, so so I think overall, I think I think the the roster was really poorly constructed. And mm -hmm. if if I were to put it on more on anybody, I, I I do think that it's 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 on Mike. And unless I hear about different stuff, and we'll talk about sort of the whys, um, um, why the possible whys that that uh, that Mike isn't talking about too much. But anyway, I, I, I my first reaction has gone on for a few minutes here. So, what was your reaction, Keegan? Oh, um, I guess it wasn't it wasn't surprise. I wasn't surprised either. One because you uh, <laughs> kind of told me, but um, <laughs> two, I I was also like. I was the guy that put out on Twitter that Mike Greer should have fired Quinn after the back-to-back -back 10 mm. gold games, right? Like in the beginning sure. of the season. Because at a certain point, it's not just about like how many losses you have. It's about how many how you lose those games. And there sure. were so many times this year that they lost games way worse than they did the year before. Um, and, and obviously, you lose Carlson and all the injuries. So like, the team's just worse. And I don't mm -hmm. think it's on Quinn necessarily. Like, I don't know. He he seems like a good communicator, especially after his games, and um, he obviously gets you know fired up on the bench, and and in some ways there were some successes in how he could piece together a lineup here um, to even get some like mm -hmm. some bright spots, you know. But I think what for Greer it was just he doesn't want to go into next year doing the same thing and hoping for a less embarrassing result. Like he wants to try something different a little bit. I think he knows that next year they're going to be bad still, but I think he's trying to use this next year as an opportunity to build for the future. And he'll probably do the same thing in the off season as well. And mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know, maybe there was something else that we don't know about behind the scenes with Quinn and the players or something that we'll talk about, but I wasn't surprised and I'm not unhappy. Like I like Quinn. I like the way that, you know, he does his post games and, but I felt like maybe it was time. Or maybe one more year, but what's the difference? They're going to be bad. Do you judge Quinn that he's less embarrassingly bad next year and then hope to keep him another year? I don't know. But it's interesting. Wasn't that surprised, though. That's my first reaction. <laughs> I think the for the fairness part of it, that I think the Sharks are going to add this summer and mm -hmm. add the profile players that both uh, Greer and Quinn did talk about. Yeah, or try to at least. And so I think that that would have been a fair judgment of Quinn's ability sure. with a with a better roster. I would even argue last year with the Sharks that if the goaltending had been better, and I know that internally that's that's what people think on the Sharks too, mm -hmm. that if the goaltending had been better last year with Carlson's season, with Meyer as good as he was before they traded him, that that team, what, you know, I think that team ended up with 66 points, but that team probably with a with better like even this year's goaltending like kind of league average-ish goaltending which i think is what blackwood and mm -hmm. kaknan gave to the sharks if the sharks yeah. had that last year then that's maybe a better team a 70-ish easy maybe even like low 80s team i don't think it's a playoff team but i i think that maybe with better goaltending the goaltending was really bad last year uh, I know, I know it's easy to, to just look at a goal, but if you look at just sort of the, 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 the underlying metrics of the goals saved uh, uh, above expected, both, both Kakinen and James Reimer were awful last year among the worst in the league. Whereas this year, even though Blackwood and Kakinen saw uh, more chances against uh, a, diff a worse defensive environment that they were average ish to better than average uh, uh, both those guys, I think this season, and so in terms of like the work that that Quinn did with a better roster again a little a little unfair <laughs> in, in in some ways because i think last year the underlying stats actually the sharks uh the sharks were pretty good expected goals if you if you want to if you want to look 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 that up uh if 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 you want to judge a team based on that they were they were like i think in the in the tw 20th uh, around from like the beginning of the season to to the to when they traded uh, Timo away somewhere around that region. So not a great team again, but uh, like average, uh, maybe slightly below average, average with some good goaltending, maybe they're above average. So 
Um, so anyway, so so that's the unfair part of it because this year I think there was no chance really with with this roster. <laughs> For sure. The chance the the chances were in your center depth, which you was non-existent this year, and in whatever the goaltending could give you. Because even the Sharks, the wins that the Sharks uh, had this past year, most of them were games that their goalie stood under head. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not just me, like, kind of making it up. I think Sport Logic has a stat about steals that I've explained in articles before. I think the Sharks had 13 steals, and the steal is a win. So 13 of their 19 wins, according to Sport Logic, Oof. was through a goaltending steal. Um, so... Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So I, I, I think I, th- I, th- I still think unfair. But to get into the more of the wise too. So yeah. if the team isn't, uh, isn't, isn't the roster isn't that good to begin with, and Mike Rear has admitted himself that he didn't expect it to be a playoff team. His thinking is more that it was worse than it should have been, and that's where my argument is that based on the injuries and the construction and some of the guys on the team, I don't think so. I, that's, that's my personal thought. Unless I hear something different, um, but I, I I don't think so. I think the team was ended up being ex- about where where it should have been. Um, one of the worst teams of the cap era. It's the second worst team officially in terms of points yep. points percentage. Um, so that could be an argument though that maybe Mike thought that this team should have got I don't know ten more points. <laughs> Or something. Mm-hmm. I think I think he knows it wasn't a very good team, but there are subtlety there that maybe maybe he thought that Quinn didn't get the most out of. I'm not sure who he, who who he would be talking about. I guess it could be guys like some of these offensive guys that he's hoping to get picks for, like a LeBanc, Barabanov, uh, Mike Hoffman, yeah. Duclair, but, which actually Quinn did get something out of Duclair in the end. But I'd maybe trade, those are uh, guys he's talking about. I don't I'd know. Trade uh, the way that William Eklund played this year for any of those dudes having a better season. So. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna get to that part of it. So I'm so so speaking of the current roster in terms of getting the most out of this team. <clears throat> besides those wins. those wingers, I'm not really sure who else you're talking about. The defense. None of those guys have a track record. Mark Edwards. Mark Edward Vlasic's track record is from a decade ago, five years ago. So he doesn't count. Uh, all those other guys. Burroughs, the young guys, none of these guys have a track record of success. Granlin actually was highly successful here, and that's a credit to both. That's a credit to Greer and credit mm-hmm. to, to Quinn, too. So I'm not sure what you could expect out of this team. So you have bad players on a decline. They're, it's not a good fitting roster either. It's not a hard working roster. <laughs> not not a 12 guys who are like Nico Sturm. Uh, or Luke Cunning kind of roster, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm not sure what was expected out of the current roster. Uh, to get to your point of William Eklund, in terms of development, that I think, and I know a lot of people, a lot of Rangers fans docked Quinn for the development of the younger Ranger players, but, mm-hmm. and I've we talked about this at length, that I, I think that's such a bullshit thing to, to put on Quinn, that Kako and Lafreniere didn't take over the league when they first, enter the league because look at where they are. I mean, Lafreniere is finally arriving as a good angel player. Kako, I don't know if Kako is quite there yet. And to put that on, on Quinn uh, when these players were 18 is, I think, ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Other young players have succeeded under Quinn in New York uh, that people conveniently forget when they when they, when they they kill, kill Quinn on that. Adam Fox, Lindgren, and not just the defenseman, uh, Pavel Buchenovic who I know uh, for a fact gives Quinn a lot of credit for for helping. Quinn is the one who put him on the penalty kill. And at that point, Buchnevich had never... Uh, Buchnevich, I keep saying his name wrong. People people were were, <laughs> were criticizing me. And you guys are right. for criticizing me on Twitter uh, about it. Uh, Buchnevich. Um, Buchnevich was, wasn't, on, wasn't on there. Now he's considered one of the better two-way wingers in the league, Buchnevich. And... I know I talked to Buchnevich during the season and I know people around Buchnevich, they give Quinn credit for that. A lot of credit for that. So mm-hmm. in terms of the Sharks, we saw uh, Eklund developed. Eklund is definitely a better player today than for he sure. was day one of trading camp. I think Thrun got better in a very difficult situation for a defenseman. We saw Bortolo. I think Bortolo is an excellent example of this. Of Bortolo was 
was was terrible, uh, to be honest, uh, as a center of the beginning part of the season. And granted, the team was terrible too around him, so that didn't help. But he had no business being at that point a top nine center in NHL. He went down to the minors. McCarthy obviously is a big part of that too, and the Sharks' development coaches like Mike Ricci and guys like that, right? But I think a big part of it too is that there was there was a standard that that David Quinn tried to set, and I think that. Borovo came back a better player, a harder working player, a more determined player, a guy that at least has a chance. Now. I don't know if Borovo is going to be a superstar or I would pencil him in for 20 goals uh, every season or whatever, but he's got a chance though. At the beginning of the season, he was honestly going the way people hate me saying this, but he's going away of Ryan Merkley. And I talked to people about that. And I never, I didn't want to put that out there because that is like kind of a kiss of death <laughs> for any sure. Sharks prospect to say that. But I would talk to people um and people who know Bordalo and they're like yeah it wasn't it wasn't the development wasn't going well like last year sure Bordalo wasn't taking it and I've said this before that I thought that Bordalo's kind of his big enemy was himself mm -hmm. and so Bordalo came back a better player and I think that's credit not just to Quinn but the credit to a Sharks organization for 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 keeping standards high for the kid and and not being like oh you can score okay have that put some put up some points who cares about everything else and so yeah so i i thought i thought quinn was pretty good with the with the, the developmental bit the guys who are up here in in, in, a, in a really tough season um so i don't know <laughs> yeah, right it's, it's, kinda... it's not the current roster it's it's not the it's not the development i don't think it's a development so yeah. so that just leaves the players I think that just right. leaves the what do the players think of Quinn? And I think at some point during the um, press conference, either you or, or Curtis or somebody asked um, Mike Greer, Mike, was the, what do you think that the players want? Like their voice, like what do they need to hear? Yeah. And he said he had a good idea of what he thinks they need. Um, but he didn't but, specify. <laughs> no, and he didn't specify if that was the reason either. But I don't know. Is it? Do you have any sense of what the players think of David Quinn? I mean, it seemed like they kind of liked him i don't know i never i never heard anything except for LeBanc, obviously but that's like <laughs> a totally different thing he was the one that like very clearly there was a divide between LeBanc yeah. and all of the sharks uh higher up so um yeah I, I don't know it didn't didn't stick out that they didn't like playing for him um and he certainly i mean he was down a lot this season but it's, i don't think he hated you know coaching those players yeah, so my understanding of it, and even Greer said, and I don't think this is this is BS. Maybe it is. Maybe it's something you just say to compliment your coach when you have nothing else good to say. But Greer even said on Saturday that that he gave Quinn and his staff credit for keeping the morale up. Mm -hmm. And I know that Nico Sturm came out and said, mm -hmm. "Oh yeah, some some days I was embarrassed to be a player." But even Nico said, and that's if you watch a full exit interview, they said that in the circumstance that he thought that the coaching staff did a good job of keeping morale up in a really tough situation. Sure. And, and a situation that sometimes, yeah, players were embarrassed to be out there on the ice wearing a Sharks uniform. But in general, though, that the coaching staff kept it positive. Um, they didn't overtax the guys. You know, when you're losing that bad, it, you could overreact and – put all this stuff on the players, whether it be um, got to do this right, got to do this better. And for what? The team is terrible. Mm -hmm. And so, so I think there, there comes a point where there's, there isn't as much of a reason to overtax on sort of just stressing the guys out kind of. Right. Yeah. And it's more about just, let's just, let's just have fun out there kind of together and and let's try to keep it positive and let's try to make it through the season together upbeat yeah. and with a smile and as a team sure. and on the, on that side of it i think quinn did a pretty good job of it the morale that's what mike Greer called it and i think that that quinn did a pretty good job of, of that part of it yeah um there are players i'm sure who and i'm sure not just lebank but there are players who i'm sure didn't like Quinn, but in general, though, I think over the last couple of years, I found that that Quinn does try to build relationships with players, like a closer relationship with, with players. Um, I think that, of course, not all players will respond to that, of course, so maybe that has something to do with it, but 
I, I, it's not, it's not from a lack of trying, I think on, on Quinn's part. Oh, I also do want to go back to what I was saying about just what does a coach do when the team is so bad? I think some fans expect a coach to kick, kick over trash cans and all that kind of stuff. But really, seriously, what is the point of that when your team is a 19 win team that is really, it's not constructed well. There isn't, there's, there's nothing that there's not much more to get out of these guys. You can kick over a trash can or whatever, but it's, as they say, water from a stone there. And I do think that Quinn understood that. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that, that possibly that, that maybe there was, there was some relaxing in terms of that, in terms of just, again, you, you can, you can yell at the Liela guys. You can take that approach, but what is the point? People are like, Oh, John Totorella, this John Totorella, that I don't think John Totorella is getting 80 points out of his team. Uh, <laughs> I would yeah. love John Tortorella's candid opinion of what he could have got out of this team. <laughs> yeah. I, I also just don't, I don't think that's good for the younger guys either. Right. I don't think like, so either. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I don't and think he, so. And, he try, and he's been angry, right? Like he got kicked sure. out of a game last year. And... Sure. And I'm he's yelled at players before too. He's been very direct and honest with players too before. So. There's a balance too. I'm not saying that he was, he was uh, necessarily mm -hmm. buddy, buddy with everybody or always soft on them. And maybe, maybe it's a thing of degrees, right? So maybe maybe Mike Rare wants somebody a little bit harder than David Quinn, which is possible, and this is fair, right? But sure. the, I guess the overall point I'm making, though, is that there are limits to just how extreme you can go as a coach to sure. get water out of a stone. And so so, so that part, so the player perception, I think, I, that's something I'm still digging at, though. There is There was a lot left in Mike Rear's uh, interview that, that suggests that there there could be something there, mm -hmm. but I also know that players historically, some of them have really liked David Quinn too. I mentioned a uh, uh, Buchnevich. Uh, I mentioned Jack Eichel before, even though they he Quinn was his college coach. Sure. So it's it's not like Quinn has a, a history of burning bridges with with players in total. Any any coach is going to be some players that like or don't like the coach. But I don't I don't get the sense that it was a majority thing and I could be wrong. We may find out more in, in the coming days and weeks and months about that part of it. But I think that as of right now though, I would not say that 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 I know that for a fact. And it's not one of these, like, I knew it a couple of days ago. I'm not saying, like, I don't know. There are some things I would say that, like, I've heard that are worth investigating. So that could be more of it. But I would say, though, that my guess is that most of the players were were, were pretty good with him. I, I, th mm -hmm. I think overall, uh, in terms of a lot of players got opportunity under him. Uh, the players that got opportunity under him, like your Grandlins, your Cunnins, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to say maybe they would. Those are the guys that you listen to, I think, if they say something bad about, about a David Quinn. Uh, if if it's uh, honestly guys who are on the way out, I don't know if their opinions hold quite as much weight as a, like I said, a Granlin or a Couture who's been around or a Hurdle. Um, yeah, maybe he's, so, just, maybe he's really just telling the truth that he thought it would be better than it was this year. And I don't know why. But how much but better, though? How much yeah. better, though? Again, how much better? I mean, I think I, looking back, we can we can say that, but in the beginning of the year before all the, all the injuries and all that stuff, um, there were some people that were optimistic about the sharks. Well, I like, was before the like, season two, but, that's what I'm saying. but I was guys, I was wrong. <laughs> I will say that I was wrong. Yeah. And there was something else. I'm going to bring this up another podcast, but there is a critical move that, and I've, I think I teased this a couple weeks ago. There's a critical move that the sharks made last year. That was a mistake that I thought was great last year. And I think is telling for, Hmm. what Mike was trying to do this year with this roster. Mm -hmm. That was a mistake on his part too, I think. Sure. And we'll talk about, I don't, I don't want to give that away uh, right now because I, I don't know if I want to make it like the, the, the focus of an episode, but yeah. But um, yeah, I, I still, unless I hear something different, I still think it's, it's more of the roster. Um, if it's not player perception that much, if it's not development, if it's not, getting maximizing the roster on the ice 
it, what else is there? I, I, I do have the, the, the sense or the feeling that could be something else, um, but that's something that I'm, I'm working on. And so I guess I'll have to leave that part. That part I'll have to leave <laughs> up, in the, yeah. up in the air for now. We'll get to it in another episode. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, but I guess one, one benefit here, and I think I said this after their back to back awful losses, was like, mm-hmm. you know, there, there's some pros, right? Like players like playing for Quinn, but like, what's the downside if you do fire Quinn, right? Like, it, it can't really get that much worse. <laughs> like, you can, you can yeah. at least try and find a new coach to build for in the future or build with in the future. I mean, it's, there's not that much downside is what I'm trying to say, except for more turnover with the young guys. But I don't know. It's pretty tumultuous already, I guess is a good way to put it. So there's not much downside, in my opinion, to, to just moving on and gives Quinn also some time to get a new job. too. No, no, no. Quinn, I think <laughs> if you like Quinn, I, I think I think I, th- I think he's he's in trouble there because hmm. two head coaching, head coaching stops. Coaching. Oh yeah. Okay. Coaching. NHL. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Could be anywhere. I, I, I think. I think. Like Bugner or whatever. Yeah. I. I think. I think Quinn's best shot at another NHL head coaching job is actually like like Bugner in Detroit, associate head coach, yeah. uh, Travis Green in New Jersey. I don't know if Travis Green was an associate head coach, but then you just sort of if something happens to the guy above you, then then maybe you get a chance to prove yourself again. But I don't know if if if, if uh, David's going to get hired as a head coach like in a normal way um no, so. again after after these these two stops um that's why that's why the unfair part comes in because i would have liked to have seen quinn with a better roster over the summer with more kind of identity hard to play against players add a little bit of skill maybe will smith comes out maybe you have macklin Silabrini mm. in there hopefully kator is healthy and just have better support players. Uh, again, like I mentioned, one of those hard to play against guys with just a little bit of skill. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if, if he, if he, if he could have uh, got something a little more out of the team like that and showed that the record wasn't all on him uh, this year, which I sure. don't think it was, but anyway, like I said, coaching is a very unfair business. So I thought it was unfair when they can Bugner. I thought it's, I think it's unfair here, but like you mentioned the downside, yeah, maybe not that much though. Yeah, I do think about uh, that just for the sharks themselves. Like, if you find somebody that you think is marginally better, who, like I said, if we talk about the degrees, maybe you want somebody who's just a little bit harder than Quinn, a little bit more this or that, right? Then okay, it makes some sense. Sure. But in terms of Quinn's, I guess, mandate to develop players and to get the most out of the roster, I actually think he did both things actually. I mean, you look at 47 points, 19 wins. How is that getting the most out of, out of this roster? This team was really bad, man. <laughs> they were very awful. Um, I agree with the first point. I do think there were times when, I don't know, like the, that team, they give up. Like they gave up in that Edmonton game to end the season. They gave up so many times. And like, yeah. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm is that is that coach. on a coaching or the players? <laughs> I, I guess some people think it's on a coach, but... I, I mean, in some so. way, it's it's more on the players. I think in the end of the day, like the behind the curtain, it's definitely on the roster construction. But all you got to do is is basically all you can do if your career is not blame it on Quinn, but try something different. I made this joke on, on Twitter. Uh, Quinn isn't isn't Doctor Quinn. He's not going to give the yeah. players a heart transplant. Yeah, exactly. He's not. And that's what, honestly, this team needed more of that. They needed more heart and soul guys that mm. were going to go through a wall so they wouldn't lose seven to two. Yeah. And you have a few of those guys. You have Mario Ferraro, you have Luke Cunnan, you have Nico Sturm, you have guys like that. Uh, Matt Benning and Couture, I think, would have been in that group if they had been healthy. But you didn't have enough of those players. True. Sure. And that, again, it, goes to again doesn't doesn't go to quinn in my opinion uh, and so that's another part actually i should mention that uh, maybe 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 greer is feeling some heat here which he might be from from okay. above i wouldn't surprise me at least because i think both years the records even if you can defend last year's team and the goaltending and all that stuff right that both years i would say the records were disappointing to the sharks mm-hmm. if i had told you that Eric Carlson's going to score 100 points, and Timo Meyer is going to be as you know good as ever, and 
Logan Couture will be healthy. Tom Asher will be healthy. You would have said, oh, wow, maybe the Sharks make it to the playoffs as your wild card. Who knows? If I told you all, you, you might have thought that, though. And they ended up with 66 points. Mm-hmm. This Sharks team, obviously, people thought it should have been better, whether it should have been or not, but people thought it should have been better. Maybe ownership thinks that. Maybe Hasso thinks that. And so that could be a part of it, too, where Greer may not have that many more chat, even though like we talked about the beginning. Greer's done a good pick, big picture job. Mm-hmm. Uh, for this franchise putting in the right direction. But I think there are a lot of questions about the the pro side of it and some of the guys they picked up and traded for and some of their decisions on the pro side of it that I've alluded to. And I think that... I think that... Mm-hmm. If there is sort of... Uh, if, if if people above Greer have that same question that that I do, then that Greer's got to maximize, again, no one expecting next year's Sharks team to make the playoffs. That would be an unrealistic expectation, no matter who you sign this offseason. But you need a significant improvement. You can't have the embarrassment of the product that we saw on the ice this past year, which I, I agree with. The, yep. You can't have that. Um, is Quinn sort of a fall guy for that? He might be. Yeah. Just kind of and. Sad which I think is, like I said, it's unfair. It's the nature of the business, but I, I yeah. tend to think that is, I do think that's unfair. And my career might be running out. This is me spec. I don't know this for a fact, but he might be running out of chances to show that he's got the all round part component of being a, the Sharks GM down. Like I said, the, the prospects, I think that side of it have been good. The guys he's drafted have, most of them have had good years. Some of them have had fantastic years like Musty yeah. and Cagnoni and a lot of good prospects. Uh, the acquisition of picks after the Brent Burns trade, the other trades in terms of divesting himself with big contracts and getting something decent back. I think those are, those are, those are all, all pluses, mm-hmm. but the on the ice product, the yeah. results I- have been disappointing for two straight years. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I think that's another component that might be a part of it too. I'm not sure. Again, I'm just speculating, but. Sure. And I think there's, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it when we talk about Will Smith, I guess, but mm-hmm. I, have, I have a thought on, on that as well. Yeah. Um, but let's, we, we said it briefly, what the future head coach might look like. Uh, maybe somebody with a more uh, hard style than Quinn, but. Is that is that what he's gonna go for? You think is it gonna be more of a veteran like Tortorella type that screams at you? That kind of thing? <laughs> uh, so I'm a little distracted because my 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 dog, but I'll, I'll still talk. So I'll st- I'll be off camera. I mean, a she bit. takes the she takes the screen. So she she she's she's the most. Oh, she's the star. Hey, Moshu. No licking, Moshu. No licking. She Moshu. likes she likes to she likes to lick herself for attention. So Moshu. No, so you're not paying attention to her. Exactly. Yeah, I was trying to get attention. Oh, now she's <laughs> wagging. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So to answer the question, um, the funny thing is that I think a lot of what the Sharks, the Sharks are still a rebuilding team. Like the last sure. thing you need is a, is a guy to like bring you over the top kind of coach because I, 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 I do think that Quinn was a good coach for the development side of things mm-hmm. where the Sharks are. And I did have questions. We, we, we're not, we're not going to answer that. It's not, it's not, it's a moot question now that he got fired, but I did wasn't sure if he was going to be the coach for the next phase of the Sharks. Yeah. But, and I think it's the same question here. So whoever you, you hire, um, it's still a development guy. (laughs) Yeah. I think. And so whoever you hire is actually probably going to have a lot of the profile, like, like a, like a, like a David Quinn, a good college guy is, is probably wouldn't be surprising. And a lot of people are talking about David Carl. Right. And so maybe, a guy, a guy like that, and David Quinn was was David Carl seven years ago when the Rangers hired him. <laughs> so the, the hot college guy, US NTB and NTDP, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, all the all the all the flowers from 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 that kind of stuff. So could be that's so yeah. So I think I think I think I think that's that's going to be along those lines. Uh, Mike did say that. Somebody with some pro experience, which Carl doesn't have, by the way, of any sort in, in coaching. But but he did mention that that would be nice. But 
Guerrero was very non-specific in terms of what he was looking for. He said it was going to be pretty open. Somebody blows, you know, a lot of the general stuff, right? But I, I will say though, to answer overall question, that I think the guy they're looking for is really a lot like the guy that they had. <laughs> so it could come so, down to like Quinn's exit interview with Greer, and he's just asking him what he thinks he's going to be doing different with this roster, and then I don't know. Maybe, maybe the answer was I can't. I can't do it, man. Like there's nothing, <laughs> nothing I can do here. Like, well, I I would have been fired too because if you ask me yeah. what what we, we could do done with this exact roster, with these injuries to to get more out of this roster, it'd have been like. I it reminds me it. of of a line that a scout told me a long time ago. This was back in the days of Fear to Finn, and. A scout told me, I think I was telling a, a, a scout about a line that the Sharks were trying, a Blickfeld and Greger. Mm. And the scout told me, this is the NHL scout, he, was, he, he told me, God couldn't carry that line. God <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always think that, that always makes me laugh. And yeah. the scout was right about, about both, I think, Greger and Blickfeld and most of the Barracuda prospects that they were trying to foist on us back then, which is always why sure. I go outside of the Sharks organization because I, I want the real, real of, of what people are, are saying. And the real, real of what, what I've heard from people so far, too, is that people are like, what what was David supposed to do with this roster? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's that's I, I haven't reached out to a lot of people on it, but the people I've reached out to, uh, scouts, yeah. agents, whatever, it's the same question. Like, what was he supposed to do with this team? So well, maybe, anyway. maybe, it really, maybe it really does come back to that, where it was like, if you hitch your wagon to, to David Quinn on, on the third year and it's still freaking embarrassing, I think maybe you go down with Quinn as well. <laughs> like maybe, maybe that's yeah, like maybe. And I, I, I wonder. I, I would think that if Quinn came back, he'd be on a very short leash. Let's say they yeah. do make upgrades, free agency, or or whatever. So, so okay, maybe. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Tough to say. Um, an interesting quote in there was that basically. Greer on Saturday, whenever his availability was, was like, yeah, we're still reviewing everybody. And then today he also confirmed that John McCarthy's going to be back very likely. Well, he said expected. So not a total confirmation, but sounds like he, he is very on the way back. And I'm not going <laughs> to spend too much upon it because we spent sure. a whole episode uh, list, uh, talking about why are the Barracudas so bad. And I wish that people would listen to that because I think that we talked with Patrick Williams, who we knows did. more about the AHL than basically any other journalist out there. Um, and he said that in his opinion, that this wasn't supposed to be a, a playoff team either. And so mm -hmm. I think if people thought about that, uh, that they would maybe be a little, uh, uh, um, I don't I also know, think that, uh, not end, as harsh on John. So at the end of the year, and I know everybody's calling for John McCarthy to be fired because the Barracuda made missed the playoffs again, but at the end of the year, he made Gushin. I mean, Gushin made himself an all-star, but Gushin's an all-star. Bortolo's up in the NHL. Muka better player. A year. Yeah, uh, a better player. Ethan Cardwell, Cardwell. scored like 20-something yeah. goals. Like, these are dudes that aren't, uh, that are going to help, you know, shore up the back end of your, your roster. And in Muka Badulin's case, like the top end of your roster, hopefully. So he did what he's supposed to do. He developed the young guys. Right. Uh, <laughs> What's he supposed to do about the goaltending that was injured? Yeah. Uh, or very young, very green yeah. for 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 all the season. Yeah. I've I said it on that episode. I, I still wonder. And actually, Mike Greer said it, and in, in he 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 confirmed or backed up my thought in his exit interview uh, on Saturday. I said with a, in an episode with Patrick. I said, why didn't the the Sharks sign or or grab a number three go NHL goalie who could be your Barracuda starter to kind of keep things smooth? Sure. In, if if the youngsters aren't aren't playing well, or if Makinyemi is hurt, mm -hmm. which are things that all happened this season. And why don't you have a number three guy? This just seemed really obvious to me. And Mike said in the exit interview that that's something that they're looking at. And so, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't, I don't really get, I think there are, there's going to be some guys who, who didn't develop, like great like it's like any coach like like a coach is not going to be able to turn every player around sure. uh coaches maybe there is a specific coach that's better with one player than, than than the other so we're speaking in generalities here generally i think that john has done a good job on the development side if you want to hit him on the veteran side getting the most out of his veterans or getting the most wins or that sort of thing 
you can, but I think there's a lot of extenuating circumstances with that, right? Like we talked about with Patrick in that episode that the team wasn't constructed in a way that anyone thought they were supposed to be a top AHL team and that goaltending was sort of a let's roll young and hope it works out. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was the approach. Yeah. And that's not an invalid approach, but guess what? It did not work out. Yeah. <laughs> Same with uh, the, my stressing about all the offense first wingers that Mike had on the team to start the year. Okay, if you get 100 goals out of those guys, it's going to work out. If, if hmm. you get drafted, you'll be able to trade them, or maybe you, you'll be much higher in the standings than you expect. You make some kind of run. Now it's great. But what happens when none of it works out? Same thing yeah. with the goaltending, right? Makiniemi, Krona, Romanov, and especially not putting the stress on, I mean, they all have extenuating circumstances. The latter two are really young. Makiniemi was injured. But if you roll with so much uncertainty going into the season, it doesn't work out, then of course you're going to have a disaster on your hands. There's no position more important than goaltending. So, so that's on Mike as well as Joe Will. And- it's Joe Will. Yeah. And Mike. Yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I give him, give McCarthy another year as well. Unless yeah. John, 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 unless, uh, unless uh, John McCarthy is like, no, Mock Name is our guy. I, yeah. I believe in him. <laughs> Thick and thin. Don't 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 resign Aaron Dell. Or if David Quinn's like, no, I stake my career on Kevin LeBanc. I'm gonna turn this guy around. Mm. Uh, it, uh, it, it, unless they're making claims like that, I, I just I'm not I'm not seeing it. So I, I I don't know. And there's a lot of uncertainty. Like I said, there's a lot of questions I think will do need to be answered about 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 all this that Greer did not fill fill us in on. I have thoughts too and suspicions and sure. things I'm working on too, I'll say. Uh, and I will say that I don't think the story is complete. So I'll say that I think I, I alluded to that 20 minutes ago. I don't think this story is complete mm-hmm. as to why Greer fired Quinn. But I will, again, just say that, yeah, the way I'm looking at it, yeah. <laughs> uh, we also once did again, mention that um, yeah. Ray Tufts, the head athletic trainer, was also fired. Oh, yeah, let yeah. Go. Uh, yeah. After 27 years. Yeah. Uh, and Mike said it wasn't because the Sharks were second in man games lost mm-hmm. this year in the NHL 459. It wasn't Ray because Tufts of is, the uh, tour. Poisoning, and... poisoning Couture's groin. That's what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but do you believe that? I don't know. Hmm. Um, but I did reach out to a couple of people who were surprised. A couple of people outside of the Sharks, they were surprised. And they said sometimes you just want your own guy in there. So that, that could be it even though Tufts has been with Greer for two years already, but maybe, maybe Greer wants to bring his, his, his own, own guy in. So, Hey, the, 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 the Warriors were, 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 were just, uh, uh, didn't make the playoffs. Uh, so how about, uh, bringing a Rick Celebrini in? <laughs> no, just get on just over kidding. Get on over there. <laughs> but, uh, I, that's a joke by the way. Okay. I, yeah. I know that Rick is very, very respected in the, in the warriors. I don't want anyone to take that the wrong way. So, um, but I just, something I thought, but though, okay. The last thing we had to talk about, just a little note about, about sure. Will Smith that, and I asked uh, Mike about this and Mike said that there was no update you mm-hmm. think that with a coach getting fired that that might make Will Smith pause. <laughs> sure. I, I, I knew, I knew the guy that, that, that was, was, was getting, uh, that, that was going to be my coach and have some certainty that you're going to play under him. And now you have a different head coach and you don't know who that is. And that might bring some uncertainty, but I don't know. I don't know if that's the case though, because there is other part of it that, that Will hasn't experienced this yet, obviously, but players get used to the fact will do learn to get used to the fact that coaches it's unfair business. And so, so you're going to have a lot of coaches in, in, in your life. And yeah. so maybe, maybe it's not that much of a factor, mm-hmm. but uh, anyway, the other part of it is that it's my belief and this is me guessing, but it's my belief that there is still a decision that, that will hasn't decided anything. Which I know isn't different than than what's what Mike has said, but I I, I that's that's my belief too, mm. that that uh, that's 
Because again, once Ryan Leonard signed there, it, it kind of seemed like, okay, we're going to hear about Will Smith the next day. And that we haven't bro. heard, I think is, is telling. Well, Gabe, I think, I don't know about Gabe, but I think the, the, the book on Gabe is that he's not ready physically or whatever. Like he's, he was going to say, but you right? think that he would do it. Like, why, why hasn't he said it? You know? Oh, maybe. Yeah, that's 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 true. But I don't know. I don't know if it's as serious with him because he wasn't as high a pick, too. Whereas true. it was asked a question from Ryan Leonard that, oh, maybe they can use him in the playoffs on a fourth yeah, line. Of course, because he, mm-hmm. his, his, his grind game kind of works mm-hmm. for that. And so maybe so I don't know. I don't know. Um, and with with Will, because he's the fourth overall pick that, mm-hmm. that there's been a little bit more of a question about that. So but yeah. um, anyway, sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, no, no. no yeah, so so. I, I think I, I think there's there's it's still in, in the air. It's still a possibility, I guess, is is what I would leave. So at, so. so so this is gonna this is a little bit of um of an of an aside, and don't mm-hmm. uh, there's gonna be a lot of comparisons here that are unfair and not not okay. real in my brain, or like that are not real, but in my brain they're they're making me kind of worried. So so back when uh, Doug Wilson and Doug Wilson mm-hmm. Jr. they drafted William Eklund, um, sure. The quote that I remember Doug saying right after they drafted him, and it stuck with me because at the time I was super pumped. I was like really mm-hmm. pumped. He said, if Dougie thinks he's ready to play in the NHL, he's ready to play in the NHL. And that was Doug Wilson's quote about, about Eklund. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like everybody in the scouting community, everybody loves William Eklund. Um, and then he goes, he plays in the NHL for nine games or eight games or whatever, and gets sent uh, back to Sweden. Super sad and um he was really bummed about it mm-hmm. turns out it was probably the best thing to do but um, yeah he may not have yeah. ever had to he probably shouldn't have ever stayed in the nhl in the first place to be honest i don't know that's another sort of baby because i was very on the side of keeping him um but that's a whole other conversation that <laughs> at the time i really wanted him to stay yeah. too yeah um but... just because i wanted something to be excited about but that, sure, that's my yeah. point is that in my brain that was the moment when looking back that i was like oh shit these guys don't know what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> like not that like mm-hmm. not that like they don't know what they're doing because very clearly Doug Wilson ran a very successful NHL franchise for 15, 20 oh, years. Oh, okay. I think I see where you're getting at. Okay. But that was the moment when I think they also were like, shit, we need to get something to stick. We need to get somebody in here that's gonna like change the direction of where we're headed. And it was what they could see was this guy falling to seventh and maybe he's gonna mm-hmm. be a stud right out of the NHL and ignite the franchise and it'll be fine. Right. Um and then the the worry that I have is that that Greer is trying to do the same thing with Smith. Like he's kind of reaching at this. This guy's gonna put butts in seats. This guy's gonna make our oh, roster okay. better. This guy's gonna change the direction of where we're headed. And he's trying right. to really get Smith to sign, not because it's good for his actual development, but because he really needs Will Smith to put butts in seats in San Jose. And that's what I'm well. And that's all again. This is all me. This is anybody yeah, else. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think it's I a little reach, like, uh, in terms of, I don't think Willie Mecklen means butts and seats. I don't think Will Smith, these aren't, these aren't, like, maybe Connor Bedard means some. that. At some, least some, yeah, maybe. Hope, I guess. Some, like, some some real diehards, right? But I think that the Sharks are trying to get back sort of the casual fans, right? Because the diehards True. are still probably still going, watching this, this, this junk product, because they're mm-hmm. diehards. They care. Um, yeah. But... Any anyway though, uh, but I, I get what you're saying though in terms of just other things besides his development on 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 Greer's mind is what you're worried about basically, right? Yeah, and, is this the right decision, not just like right, uh, right, right, you, and you want him. You know, I, I I I that's something that I'll have to explore more. I'm not, I can't answer that 100. percent I know that Greer has said that his development is the most important thing, mm-hmm. but Greer has also said that he thinks he's ready which I know some people contest and which I, I thought watching him at first that I thought he could use another year. But then, like I said, I came out with a story with, with this a couple weeks ago. I talked with people, scouts outside the organization. They all think he's ready. Yeah. Um, maybe not ready to score 70 points or whatever, but he's, he's ready for the league. And so <clears throat> I've kind of changed my opinion about that. If it was only Greer saying it and, my sources or scouts outside of the Sharks organization are telling me, no, 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 no. Then mm-hmm. I'd be like, okay, I trust these guys outside the organization with no vested interest in whether Will Smith leaves or not to, to tell me something resembling the truth. Yeah. And, but 
all all those all the scouts seem to think he he's ready. Um, and so, he very well could be. I'm not saying he's so he very well could be right. And so uh, I would say if we want to compare Smith and Eklund in terms of one on one, right? Smith isn't as clearly light as Eklund was, and that, I think that was mm-hmm. that was that was the big knock on Eklund that did, that he just was so so light, of course. and like literally his weight. And that he would literally get killed <laughs> the first yeah. time that Z- Zadorov uh, 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 took took a run at him. He 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 would he would disappear, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. And I think that was a but reasonable anyway. concern because he was so so light, and Al Smith isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason why I thought Eklund should stay back then is that Eklund is really smart, and I think Smith is very smart in a lot of the same ways. And so. I can't answer your question though, in terms of what Greer's motivation is or management's motivation is. I do agree no. that I don't, I don't know if it translates to butts and seats so much, but in terms of hope, yes, yeah. I think this um, have Will Smith coming up. Uh, mm-hmm. It just brings a lot more optimism and positivity to your actual product on the ice. Yes. Uh, and so that, that does that, that part of it does matter. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll see. It might be a moot point because Will might still indeed go back. Yep. That's not so, again. That's not me yeah. saying that I'm down on Will Smith. Again, I think, I think the same as I've always thought about Will Smith. I think there's there's a chance that he's a first line NHL center, and that's amazing for the Sharks. But what I'm trying to say is like, it, and he getting in, he could he could very well be ready for the NHL. What I worry is that the the signals that I'm getting from Mike Greer is somebody some trying to pull the ripcord too early in this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Not, and we'll see this summer, right? Like if he starts yeah. doing the things that signify that he's pulling the ripcord, then, then we know, but you know, really wanting Will Smith firing Mike David Quinn. I mean, it's good in some ways cause he is, he's trying new things or, or trying to change things up, but I don't know. I just get a little bit spidey sense tingling of the end of the Doug Wilson. Era sure. That day. I got I got PTSD from the end of the Doug Wilson era, <laughs> so um, that's that's all I gotta say. It's it's not it's it's not an outdoor question for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. I I can't answer that specific question right now or 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 try to. I know what mm-hmm. Mike has said about it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's accurate or or the truth of it. Of course, so with anybody, um, so yeah, I guess I guess I guess we'll have to see on that one. A lot of a lot of uh, questions with 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 the sharks. I think uh, more questions as usual. Now, it's never, it's it's never a, a, a relaxing summer with a team like this. I guess. So. <laughs> yeah. At least we didn't move to Utah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, like yeah. on the bright side, yes. On the bright There's side, there's still a team to to cheer for next year. So. <laughs> yeah. That would, that's not a slight on Coyotes fans or on Utah fans. It's the truth. Um, it's the truth. At least we're not Utah. <laughs> At least you didn't get, you know, at least we're not covering that story. Well, right? actually, Utah, if you're Utah's guy, at least you're not Arizona. So, yeah. yeah. I do. I miss the Coyotes so much. Like, I, I'm excited. <laughs> They've been gone for two weeks, okay? So <laughs> I know, but they were, like, one of the teams when I was a kid that I, like, just really liked their logo, the way they looked, and all this stuff. And, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's uh, another thing that happened last week. So Yeah. <laughs> but, um. I got I got nothing else to say. I um, am ambivalent about this firing. I liked Quinn as a person, um, but I think you can't get much worse than it was. So might as well try something new. Hmm. That's what I got. Yeah, anything I don't know if I have anything more to add. Yeah, uh, I, I I think uh, we'll we'll see we'll 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 see what happens. Uh, like you said, it it does it's sort of uh, uh, an easy move for for Greer to make it. So I know that's his friend and his. And his first hire, and I think that's another part of it too. That does put the the bullseye on Greer because this is also Greer's first hire too, and mm. uh, did not work out. And so I think that Greer's next head coaching hire could be his last one if it doesn't work out. So I I, I don't know, but it kind of that's my spidey sense, I I, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> because you don't get too many cracks at this. Yep. Just keep on hoping that the prospects are what they're supposed to be. Yeah. It might be. <laughs> I mean, and that might be what carries, them. honestly, that might be what carries Mike over. We can have mm-hmm. questions about his first head coaching hire that he just fired. We can have questions about his, his NHL roster, which I, I, I had a lot of questions over this past season, his construction of it, his construction of it. True. And 
if they get Celebrini, if Smith comes out and he hits, Eklund looks like a player. He may he may survive it all just because of that component was done right in terms of the development aspect. The picks were done right, and I'll, just a little bit of luck, obviously, in the lottery. Now, do we get a head coach before or after the lottery? Ooh. I think That's after true. the lottery. I think yeah. for sure you, you need one in place before free agency. There's no question about that. Yeah. So I would think before the draft, but the lottery, yeah, I, I would Two think weeks. after the lottery, I would think yeah. this would be my guess. Uh, they also have U18s too. So that's another draft uh, uh, draft uh, thing that they have to concentrate on. Um, I'm talking about yep. Greer, right? And so, uh, so yeah, that would be my guess. So yeah. because the yeah, lottery's large two, two weeks. weeks from now. So yeah, yeah so I, I think I think after, but I don't know. I don't know. All right, guys, we will um, come back next week with a probably a little bit longer of an episode and do some yeah. more off, off season shenanigans uh, before the lottery. But uh, maybe have some U18s to talk about if I get around to watch it. No, we have a lot of stuff to talk about just roster construction, free agents, that sort of thing, coaching candidates. So, yep, it's going to be fun. All right, guys, hope you all have a good week. Bye. I think the girls with their nails done now.